welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Hi, I'm Iris Acker and I am your host today. We've titled this show, He's the King of Latin Theater. Well, hold it right there, because first we're gonna meet the panel. Say hello to Michael McKeever. He's a playwright and he's an actor. And Karen Stevens, an award-winning actress and also a writer. Bill Hirschman, he is a theater arts journalist. Did I get it right this time? That was excellent. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and our guest, who I call the king of Latin theater, is Mario Ernesto Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, yeah. Mario. Welcome. I need my crown, though. <laughs> oh, I, knew, I knew we forgot yeah. something. Mario, I don't know where to begin with you, but I think I want to begin with Latin theater, Teatro Avante, which in fact you started and is blooming today. Correct? Yes. Well, I don't know about blooming, but it, we're still here. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the which answer. Is, which but, is good enough. How long, is, how long has it been? Uh, Teatro Avante opened in 1979. And so yes, I'm still here. And, <laughs> that's a lot to well, do. Well, that's about the time you interviewed me before. That, you know, I cannot believe that's, that, that's a long time a ago. Long, long time ago, and, uh, also and the years festival ago. started in 1986. So we're celebrating 35, 36 years, and 30 for the festival. Wow. Well, obviously, you have had a great career, not only as a director, a producer, and an actor. Um, because I, I, I'm going to start backwards a little bit, because I personally am so proud that you were awarded the Carbonell George Abbott Award. That is such a prestigious award. You've awarded so many, but personally it means a lot to our panel because we're also involved with the Carbonell Awards. So now, <coughs> you were picked to this award. I loved your speech. I wish we had it on camera. I wish we could share that with our audience, but I'd like you to tell me a little bit about you, what you said then. Can you remember? It wasn't that long ago. Well, let me tell you that it, it's a very prestigious award, like you say, and, and I, I was very proud, very proud of getting it, mainly because <coughs> it's, it's from you all, you know. It's from, from our home. Yes. And that, that's always very valuable uh, to me and to anyone that, that gets it, you know. But uh, it was a, a, a pretty long speech. Yes, it was. <laughs> well, I, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> uh, isn't that something? Usually, as soon as you walk off stage, you forgot what you said. Yeah. <laughs> no, basically, I, I, I mentioned about how we started. I mentioned about uh, what an artist goes through to do what we want to do and what we need to do and what we know how to do best. Uh, but basically, I was speaking, you know, <laughs> To, to, the, to an audience that, that knew exactly what I was talking about. And then I mentioned uh, the fact that, that uh, you know, how much help I've, I've received from my family, from my mother, how much money I have gotten from her just to pay the bill. <laughs> the bill <laughs> you know. and, and, uh, and, and why we do theater and why I do theater, uh, uh, the type of theater that we do, which is Talk basically... Talk about that. Yeah, Latin theater, that. that's, you know, let's well, talk about Latin Well, basically the, the non-commercial theater, the theater that, that, that uh, brings you emotions and that, 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 that you learn from it or, 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 or that we're discovering some part of history that, that, that you don't know, uh, in addition to entertain. Uh, in fact, we're now working in a, in a play that um, it, it is exactly that. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, a Jewish playwright from Argentina is writing a play that I wanted to do 12 years ago. Really? It's about uh, the St. Louis ship. Oh, uh, sure. Came here yes. to, uh, well, first went to Havana with almost 1,000 passengers <coughs> and then to Miami and they weren't allowed to disembark. Right. This is so during World War II. Two. Yes, it was World from, uh, from 1939, yeah. uh, Hamburg, Hamburg to Havana. Wow, yes. And, and they, they um, went back basically to commit suicide. To be killed. It, because that was when Hitler was invading the entire... I think the, the only ones that, that were saved were the ones that, that landed in the, um, England because Hitler was not able to invade England, but the rest... Uh, most of them perish. So that's a a real 
black dot in, in, in Cuba's and the United States uh, uh, history, uh, yes. History. And, and we want to do something about it. For, for, the, for the people who have only moved here in the last two or three years, to them, there has always been the Latin theater, very vibrant and, and, and wide scaled Latin theater. But when you first came, there was very little. Talk about how Latin theater has evolved over the last 20 or 30 years. <clears throat> well, basically, when, when you're doing theater from, made by immigrants, you know, it's, it's basically to entertain, to make you laugh, mm -hmm. because people don't want to hear about drama. <laughs> so that's how it started. I, I came here in 1962. I don't know if you know the Pedro Pan operation. Mm -hmm. I'm a Pedro Pan. And I came in 1962, and then I left. I got a scholarship to go to Helena, Montana. Montana? Yes, Montana, <laughs> very close to Canada. Talk about, uh, talk about a tropical island boy <laughs> <laughs> in the snow. Uh, um, so, but anyway, I, I, I couldn't see my parents for a year and a half. And then I, they came and they, they, at that time you had to relocate, you couldn't come back to Miami. So they decided to go to San Antonio, Texas, where my sister was. Mm -hmm. And also, because of the language and the weather, they r decided to go to Texas instead of Montana. And, but then we finally came back to Miami. Uh, it's been our home ever since, in 1968. So when I came to Miami in 1968, uh, there was Latin theater, but it was mostly vaudevilles and, and light comedies and political satires and that type of stuff, which I didn't like. I, it, it was not for me. Mm -hmm. So I sort of like tried to change the situation, but I couldn't. So I said, well, the only way that I, that I can do whatever I want to do is to open my own company. And that's what I did. We opened a company that now called <coughs> Teatro Avante. And uh, the same thing happened years later when uh, I, I thought uh, the theater, the Hispanic theater in Miami, needed enhancements and a push. And, a, and a, so we created an organization called Acting Together, made up of 12, about 12 organizations that lasted only two years, because at the end of two years, they didn't want to continue, but I did. And I said to them that they were all invited, but evidently they didn't want to continue with the festival, but I thought it was something very important to do. And I said, but if I'm going to have all the, the, the responsibility, I want to have all the authority. So it was fine. They were all OK. And, uh, and, and then I immediately went to the Ford Foundation, where I got a, a grant to create, to make the festival. Uh, those two years, 86, 87, was local, and then 88, was national, thanks to the Ford Foundation. And then we got a grant from the Rockefeller Foundation, and it mm. was international sin, in, since uh, at, in 89. And it's been international ever since. Wow. International. Yep. So basically, that, that's, uh, that's the way I've always thought. Uh, I, I mean, you have to think of a mission and your objectives and, and go for it. Mario, what are some of the countries that submit work to the festival each year? I know it's a, it's a wide variety of, um, of uh, countries that are represented each yeah. year. Yes. Well, uh, uh, since 2009, we are uh, offering tributes to countries. We have always bring companies from all over Latin America and Europe. Uh, in fact, uh, one year came Russia and Japan. Uh, th there's been, you know, the entire world has been here, uh, but uh, uh, we figure if we if we have a tribute to a country, particular to a country, it will increment the the audience from that particular country that are living here in Miami. You know, Mi Miami now it, it's 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 full of everybody, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, we wanted to please and to want to, you want to, the festival always to be. Uh, you know, uh, 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 inclusive in, instead of exclusive. So of course. Uh, it's uh, this. This year is Brazil. Last year was Argentina. So that that that's how we've been bringing all, all types of. Also, I get invited to festivals all all around, mm -hmm. and and whenever I see something that I think Miami should see, uh, whenever I see something that has artistic quality, I try to. Uh, 
I, bring them. I was going to ask, how do you pick the shows that are part of the festival? Do you, you obviously go and you see them in different yes, other I festivals? Have to, yeah, I have to see them. Do, I have do, to see the entire. Do, um, do theater companies from around the world contact you and say, please come see our show, we'd like to be part of it? How, how does that work? Well, the only rule that we have in the festival is that, that the play must be have written by a Hispanic playwright or a Hispanic descent. Uh, we also accept uh, classics uh, adapted by Hispanic people. Uh, and, uh, but it can be in any language and it can be in any country. Japan came with Don Quixote. Slovenia came with a, an Argentine play. Uh, <laughs> and it, it creates a double, you know, because not only we are preserving our Hispanic culture, but we're also <coughs> sort of forcing other countries from non-Hispanic countries to present that work uh, to their audience. So it, it's also, That's I mean, wonderful. Uh, uh, Slovenia oh. brought a, a beautiful uh, play <coughs> once and, and they presented over there and uh, something that, that they would have never seen if it wasn't be for the, for the festival. Russia came with a, with a Ukraine came with a, a play about Lorca. Uh, of course, it was a very interesting take I mean, if you see the the Japanese Don Quixote, uh, you, you, <laughs> it's mind-boggling. <laughs> but it's it's okay. It's a it's the way that they interpret, you know, a Hispanic playwright. But is so it done in those languages, Japanese and Russian and Slovenia? Yeah, Slovenia. We try to we try to uh, uh, they perform in their language, and then we try to pre present uh, super titles okay. in English or in Spanish. Like in, our, in the case of Teatro Avante, we have performed in Spanish with English super titles since 1995 okay. because we want everybody to take advantage of it. However, I need to tell you that we have failed. What do you Whoa. mean? So, what do you mean? We, we <coughs> haven't been able to attract an Anglo audience. Hmm. Uh, even though we've been doing it with uh, super titles in English since you know that long time ago, but uh, it, we we uh, we need to <coughs> every year we try something different. Why do you think that is? Any any thoughts? Why do I think it is? Well, you know, you could answer that question, <laughs> but but I would tell you that that um, there there are several things. First, I think no one wants to see a work that you're not, gonna, you're not going to understand. And maybe the, audience, the Anglo audience feels that they're not gonna understand it. Uh, another thing is that it, they think it's very hard to read the super titles in English, which they're not, because you're, you're here watching the play and you don't even move your head. It's just moving your eyes, mm -hmm. you, you read and, and then you look down. I have to say, I've, I've seen shows in Spanish with the, um, the super uh, in English, as well as operas, and right. I, well, it's all, never yes, gotten away. Say, it's, yeah. And also, maybe because they're really not interested in, in, in what the play is all about, and which is a, which is a fact of life. I mean, it, it, it's the... Well, dealing in Miami, you know that it, there are many people that are not interested in theater anyway. Well, there's that. <laughs> you know that. So, so maybe, <laughs> you know, the percentage is <laughs> They go down, down as you get more specific. <laughs> but it works in reverse as well, and I want you to address this. Uh, the, the Actors Playhouse in... in, in uh, uh, Colorado. Miracle Mile. Right, on the Miracle Mile. And the Coconut Grove Playhouse, when it was operational, both of them have made very specific attempts to attract Hispanic audiences, uh, particularly with shows that talk about the Hispanic experience, both here and in mm -hmm. Cuba. And mm -hmm. they are pulling their hair out because they've never been able to get a large Hispanic audience to come and watch shows that have been specifically chosen to speak to them. Why do you think that yeah, well, is? Well, there's not a large uh, Hispanic audience that, that is attracted to theater. Oh, number one. And number two, sometimes they perform in, in English, a play, you know, like, like Nilo's plays, right. they, they That's perform exactly in English, what I was thinking. and m maybe because they're not bilingual or because they don't want to see a play in English, they'd rather see a play in Spanish. But it is very difficult. We have tried many formulas and no one has the right formula to attract them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a fact, and the 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 worst part about it is that Brazilians, Colombians, Argentinians, mm -hmm. they all come to Miami from towns and countries that have a tradition in theater, huh. 
and they do the other way around. Instead of us imitating them, they imitate us. So then they, once they're here, they mm. go shopping, they travel. <laughs> they go to the beach. They go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't go to the theater. Wow. Even when we are celebrating that particular country, wow. they still don't come. So I, I have to say, a, a few years back, I was in Argentina, this goes back, and it's a vibrant theater community. Oh. That city had theaters everywhere and beautiful theater. Oh. In Buenos Aires, there are over 600 theaters. Exactly. And they have wow. like, like close to 400 openings a year. You know what this reminds and me? And there are four. Going way back to New York and the Yiddish theater. Mm -hmm. Second Avenue was all Yiddish theater. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the people who, and of course the shows were in Yiddish. And uh, <coughs> that's all the, the, the Jewish community went to at that time was the Yiddish theater. What changed it, what got them to Broadway, is that when the Yiddish theater started failing and Broadway took over, is the people from the Yiddish theater went to Broadway. Right. <coughs> well, the actors. So right. they were Molly stars Pecan to the Yiddish like community, and so they were on Broadway. Well, then we'll go and we'll see them there. Uh, here, um, you're saying they only, you don't have that many, but I will tell you that the Jewish community loved theater. They're very, wherever they are in the world, they're very mm -hmm. addicted to theater or anything in the arts. How can you attract your audiences if it's so narrow? Oh, <coughs> uh, uh, by bringing uh, uh, high quality theater or theater that, that, theater. that, they, that they're interested in, in seeing, uh, not, not something that they may think they're going to waste their time. You know, there have been studies made, uh, uh, I've read ones that, that you only have two hours free a day. So the thing to do is try to attract to my theater your two hours, of, of, uh, and that is, uh, that is uh, mm -hmm. difficult. That is, that is very difficult. So uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. You know, um, we, we always say in the African American community, it's very similar. It's, if it's not a Tyler Perry play or a gospel, touring play, they're not going to come out and see the theater and they really, you know, only a select group will come out and support local theater. So do you think um, maybe part of the solution to that is developing young audiences? Do you have a, an arm of your, we do, your theater? We do, that... uh, do plays for children. In fact, the <laughs> festival has one day, one entire day called the International Children's Day where everything is free and we uh, uh, try to, um, well, we do workshops we, we have entertainment, painted faces, we have a train going around, but we also then present a major international children's play mm -hmm. to them. And we get close to 600 of them. Wow. Uh, so, so mm -hmm. and, and yes, that, that is something that since parents and teachers are not doing, mm -hmm. we have to do it. So mm -hmm. how? It's, it's a labor that, that, that must be done. But I know what it, you know, the African American community, it, it's, it, uh, there are many, many other reasons, of mm -hmm. course, you know, when, yeah. especially with it, with the my community, uh, when you're an immigrant, all you think is, it's to food and education. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't have time to, to go to the theater either. It's just that in our case, we sort of like, <laughs> stay, stay in that mode for a longer period of time, <laughs> not like the years did, you know? Uh, so, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a calling. I think, uh, I calling? think we all, uh, you know about this, it, it's where we define the law of supply and demand. Uh, no question about and, it. And, and, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm on 8th Street selling apples <laughs> and people want to buy avocados. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I want them to, to buy the apple and, and they don't want to buy the apple, so, but I want to... Sell the apple. I, I want to still in business. <laughs> and I'm going to keep selling apples until they, they, they go bad. And they haven't gone <laughs> bad yet. One of the things yet. that's interesting that the Arsht Center has done is that they have tried to reach that audience by doing shows that are theatrical in their theater, but they're very spectacle oriented and don't have a lot of language involved. In some cases, no language at all. Uh, they did Slava's Snow Show. They did the Donkey Show. They just did um, 
what am I blanking on? It doesn't matter. But they think that they are trying to reach a Hispanic audience that way. Does that work? No. No, I would say, <laughs> I would say I consulted with them before they did it. I don't think because your, your, your shows are very much language based. No, not really. Not really. Okay, tell no, me. no, no. We, uh, look, me we brought a show uh, uh, about Alzheimer's uh, in, from Barcelona, Spain, and it was it didn't have no no words at okay. all. Uh, but it, it's very difficult, very hard to 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 let an Anglo audience know that this play has no words and it's good <laughs> and you're gonna like it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it no, it it, it really doesn't work that way and uh, it, but the idea of the arsh going on with h2 ombre i think i think the key word here is interest okay and i think the anglo community is not interested in the hispanic shows it, period it, it's funny you say and that that's something that we have to that have to buy i mean uh, you have to admit it and and unless we can do something to attract that interest or make it uh, interesting it, it, we're gonna. I'm gonna keep on failing. <laughs> there were two. But you'll keep on. <laughs> there, there were two projects. There were two projects that we worked on at um, Zoetic Stage. The two plays that I had written. Um, one was called Moscow, and the other was Clark Gable slept here. And in both those, we learned this from Moscow, which took place um, during the Pedro Pan, uh, Pan um, Exodus, as it were. Um, it took place in Miami in 1962, and all the changes that were happening. And as an experiment, because I thought it might work, we put great um, bits of dialogue in Spanish with the Hispanic characters speaking Spanish. Right. And what we found was that it brought in, his, by word of mouth, mm -hmm. oh. Hispanic audience members who normally wouldn't go. That demographic started coming to the show. We got so excited because we thought, now we've hooked this audience base right. that we... They never came to any of the other shows. They loved it, and we did yeah. really great yeah. with, with um, a Hispanic um, yeah. demographic. But the next two shows, which didn't have any Spanish, that took care of that. Word of mouth, by the way, works very well. Oh, yeah. in especially in Miami. You know, everywhere. But there's something that, that we haven't mentioned, is that don't forget that there are more bilingual Hispanics than bilingual Anglos. Mm -hmm. Oh. We can go to anything done in English, Yes. and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, at least m my generation, not my mother's generation, mm -hmm. which, by the way, she turned 102 last week. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, no. uh, uh, yes, and, and her mind is better than mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, and uh, that, that older generation doesn't, doesn't speak English at all. So, uh, uh, and there's a large audience there. You know, the Gratelli, Sarsuela's audience, it, 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 they're all, you know, of uh, 60, 70, well, 70 80, right. uh, and, but they don't speak English, mm -hmm. you know. It's just like, like the Anglos are, are very, f I think the, the, there's a very minor, small percentage of Anglo speaking Spanish. I, I, you're true. absolutely right. The, the, um, the, uh, the differences between Hispanics who speak English as opposed to the, uh, who are bi bilingual. Well to the um, Anglos who are bilingual. It's, but it's I go I, back to the double. word interest. If I'm interested in seeing something, yeah. even if it's in Russian, if yes. I have a cold, if it's raining, <laughs> if I have visitors, uh, I go and see that because but that's you. I have my interest, you know, it, that, that's basically it. I was in Madrid and I went to see Man of La Mancha in Spanish. My Spanish is limited, <clears throat> but uh, I think those of us who study Spanish here, high school Spanish, and I, I've been, yo estudio español toda mi vida, pero no hablo bien, no, no comprende bien, pero yo trato, yo trato. See, I just said I've been studying Spanish all my life. I still don't speak it well, I don't understand it well, but I try, yeah. I try, I try. And that's where it's at. And if you speak to me in Spanish right now, and no es despacio, uh, no comprende. Y si te digo Aires, tú eres una mujer muy bonita. Muy bonita. Oh, oh no. I understood that. <laughs> so did I. Je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. Yo comprendo. I went to uh, uh, Buenos Aires last November, and I went to, well, <clears throat> no matter how many theaters you go to, and no matter whether there are 1,500 or 20 seats, they're all full. I mean, they're all full. 
But basically, since it is a, 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 a town that has a large tradition of theater, people go. I mean, you can write about a lamp, and people want to know what that lamp is all about, <laughs> and what did it do, and what it uh, her, its history, and what you know, what part of history. You know, here you need to have a very uh, interested subject, otherwise people won't go. People is not interested in, in, in you writing about a lamp. In Buenos Aires, they are. Is it that be, because of the common culture? I mean, the culture is, is one, is one uh, yeah, as opposed uh, to uh, here, where we are so dispersed. Uh, and, and also, there are so many nationalities mm -hmm. that, that it, it's, it's how, how can you do a play, a Cuban play that Brazilians would like? Or, mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. especially if it's a realistic play. It's, it's difficult. Sure. I, I was saying, as the city grows, as Miami grows and becomes more urban, which you've seen happen in the last five years, do you think that will change, that, that theater will, just by nature of it being a very urban sport, that there, there will be a, 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 an uptick in the, the interest in more people going to theater, no matter what culture they come because from? Because of what? Just because the, the city is growing so quickly and becoming more, um, more what's the word I want, cultural. I want to be hopeful. <laughs> and I want for the people living in Miami to forget about cash, to forget about concrete, and to forget about the beaches. But it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is our first program that we've done on Latin theater, really. And all I, except when I had you on about 30 years ago, uh, that's how it's, no, it couldn't have been quite that long. I haven't been on that long, at, uh, Mario. Anyway, um, once again, education. I shows I don't realize that we, we just kind of sneak it in. <laughs> we don't realize what's going on. But I know that you know what's going on because that's why you watch us every week and we continue to ask you to. And if you want to know what's going on in theater, uh, I hope that you add Latin theater if you don't already, we Bill, do. just in case. Just go to 30 uh, theater on stage.com. And um, if he hasn't added Latin theater yet after today, I'm sure he will. Uh -oh. And uh, yeah. thank you. And you see what's going on here. It's just wonderful. Educational, whether you like it or not, continue to watch us every week. And please go to the theater.